Paul Murphy, it's Limerick who go on to their fourth successive All Ireland final. What a team, what a performance. It was in the end 224 to 118. But I suppose we'll start with the first half. You know, it was a brilliant first half, 113 to 112 at half time. What did you make of the game overall? Yeah, look, a tale of two halves, really. Um, Galway put in a strong performance in the first half and they seemed to get their matchups really well and they knew what they wanted to do, let's say, for their own puck out. They seemed to overload one side of the pitch with one lone runner nearly going to the other side and invariably picking one or the other, picking the lone runner or, or I suppose, giving a bit of commitment to their forwards that they'd win the ball. And they got a, you know, they reaped a lot of rewards off it. They got a lot of good ball into Conor Whelan as well. And, you know, Carl Mannion's goal was just a brilliant goal. He was just showed he was full of confidence, you know, took on the defence and hung it up. Um, you know, they were point, they were ahead by six points at one stage. And that goal chance that Galway had uh, just towards the end of the second half, where you know Limerick just sniffed it out, but Limerick went down the other end, then hit them for three or four points. Like that was a big turning point, and you'd wonder if Galway got that goal, not so much would Limerick come back. We knew they would, but would they have enough in the tank to get back at them? But as we saw in the second half, then once Limerick came back at Galway, Galway just seemed to collapse a small bit, started hitting aimless ball, and you know really the heads just dropped, and we saw a bit of the Limerick of old, and we saw a little bit of the swagger of Garrod Hegarty coming back into it, and it just, with 15 minutes to go, you knew the game was just slipping out of sight of, of Galway, and look, I think the energy just drained out of them in the end. Yeah, in that first half when they went six points up, I thought what was so impressive was not only the scores, but how they were taking them. As you mentioned, the Cahomanian goal, was a lot of confidence, there was a lot of bite about going. There was, yeah, and exactly what you're saying, like how they took their scores was excellent. They were really finding the best player in the best position and they had not just one option, but they had one or two options there. So they had the short ball was on, but they also had the long ball into the full forward line and the full forward line were finding space. So... That was through the movement of the rest of the players on the pitch and they just seemed to tire from doing that in the second half and couldn't maintain it. But, you know, when you look at the calibre of scores that Galway were getting, it was top class. And then in the second half, they got five points in the second half, two from freeze. You could just see it just dropped off a cliff altogether. So that's something Galway will be disappointed of going home tonight that they showed that they were capable of doing it but they just couldn't sustain it. And, you know, the question mark would be over that from going home. You know, was it a case of was it in the legs or was it a case that uh, Limerick just got the better of us? Which, it'll be disappointing either way for Galway once they try and swallow this one. There was one point um, when it was 1-6 to 112, the Nicky Quaid went down and he took his helmet off and he was just taking a bit of time. Something could have happened or he could be managing the game well. I said it to John Kiley there and he sort of laughed and just said, well, I was too busy actually on the sideline to be looking. But it just made me think, you know, at that point it was crucial they slowed yeah. the game down. It was, yeah, look at it. And it, it's no slight on, on Limerick, but it is certainly something that Nicky Quaid, you know, I've seen twice this year he had a problem with his contact lens and he hadn't had a problem since 2019 oh, semi final. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be contact lens or something there. But look, it's game management. And, like, oftentimes other teams will look back and we hear, let's say, journalists or we hear pundits talking back saying that, you know, Galway or Kilkenny or whoever should have managed the game better at certain times and slowed it down. Limerick do it. Limerick don't wait for any want to do it um, and look they just chose their moment that listen maybe we need to take the sting out of the game here and that's part and parcel of it as much as the skill of the game of putting the ball over the bar or whatever and back of the net some of the skill of the game is knowing your moments to take the pace out of it and look I think Limerick did it there and it, it, it worked really well for them and I don't think anyone will begrudge them of that and just the way they had to change things around coming into the game Limerick obviously Declan Hannan was out so it was William O'Donoghue who went, went back to, to centre half back what did you make of that decision? I suppose the best compliment you could say to Will O'Donoghue is that we didn't really notice that he went back there, like that there wasn't he wasn't exploited back there. And I think the thing about it is is that it's the Limerick system really that just works. It's not a case of one player in one position looking to, I suppose, lord the game. It's their system that works for them. And you know, Will O'Donoghue slotted back in there and you could see he was communicating really well, but they all were, were making the calls there. It wasn't just him making the calls. You could see they were all communicating really well. So I think the biggest compliment you could say to anybody that went into number six there today, but it was Will O'Donoghue, was just that we didn't notice him. He wasn't a talking point. The talking points were elsewhere in the game. And if you took, if you said that to Limerick fans or even the Limerick management before the game, you'd say, well, that means he must have had a good game. Yeah, we were wondering with Declan Hannan out, what Limerick team, would, what they would be like, I suppose, because not only is his hurling, but just the way he leads as a captain is so important. You know, he, he almost pulls the strings, as people say. But he, William did so well to slot in there. And not that you didn't notice Declan, but they can do it without Declan, is probably what I'm saying. Exactly, yeah. Like, you wouldn't think there's many more lessons this Limerick team could learn, but yeah. there's one that, yeah, we can function without uh, Declan Hannan. And look, I don't know what, what Declan Hannan's situation is now, and we probably won't know till the day of the final if he's going to be back in time or not, but... I think it's another a string to the Limerick bow to say that 
like they believe in their system and if their system works it doesn't matter what players are really on the pitch and we've seen them tried and tested without Keane Lynch without Declan Hannan and there's been many players have dropped in and out of the team Sean Finn has gone now as well but the system still remains and you look at the calibre of players they brought off the bench as well they still have that strength there and uh, I think yeah it was just another element that Limerick can now believe that you know, it doesn't really matter who we have on the pitch on any given day as long as we all stick to the system we can all play in many different positions and no one person you know sinks the ship here we, we can keep this going you've been there and done it as a player how important is it to have that impact off the bench if you were to go on and, and win all irelands like limerick you know they're going for their fourth successive i would say that having that impact is so so important it is yeah it's not only from i suppose having the impact but it's just sustaining the 70 minutes like galway did go hard at limerick there but limerick were able to absorb it and some of that is physically some of it is emotional but if players know that okay i'm not expected to play a 70 minute match here i can go and play 40 minutes 50 minutes and play really hard and then you know you have Cahill O'Neill coming off the bench or you have Graham Mulcahy or Richie English they just have such quali- quality players that they know okay well if i go and expend myself after 50 minutes there's another top class player to come in off the bench and that's that's important for a team to know before you go out on the pitch so we have we're not waiting on 15 players here we have 20 players that can come in you know a, a, we have a pick of 30 players but 20 are going to play today and they used the full bench today and you just saw as they were introducing players it was just coming up another notch another notch and as well because those five players that were coming in knew that there's a jersey up for grabs here for a final and I want to be on the starting team and if not have a role so like it's just such a such a strong area for them and um, it's, it's, it's so important now for them going into a final that they can not only sustain the 70 minutes but sustain possibly an extra time as well And just looking at Galway then and their subs I'm pretty sure it was only three subs that, that Henry used so do you think that sort of has an impact I know they were playing more games as well obviously Limerick had that break was it just tiredness in the end? It seemed to be, and it seemed to be not just a case of that they failed in one or two areas, like let's say 15 minutes ago, it, it, it was kind of everywhere all over the pitch. They lost their shape, they seemed to be more reactive to what Limerick were doing, whereas in the first half they were proactive. They were going dictating to Limerick what they wanted to do, but in the second half it just seemed to be a case of Limerick were making the calls, Galway were reacting. So you could you could bring in 10 substitutes at that stage if you want, but it's, it's not a question of legs anymore, it's a question of the heads are a little bit gone now at this stage, we're striking long aimless ball, and it's a little bit tough to get yourself back into the game then. And at this stage, Limerick had their backs up, you know. So, um, yeah, look, you could say it was maybe substitutes, but I just think that because so many areas failed for them in the last 15 minutes, there was no one area that if they improved in, they could have came back at Limerick. There was just Limerick just dominated in so many areas that it was it was too much for Galway. We talked about changes as well that Limerick had to make. Obviously, Grode Hegarty was one of them. He got two brilliant points today. Were you impressed with his performance? Yeah, like I mean, we spoke about it during the game. I just, I, I thought I saw a small bit of the swagger back in Garrod Higarty. That's something we associate with him, where he's going flat out, but he looks like he's going at eighty percent. And you know, the point he got over under Cusick stand at the twenty-one, like he just struck it like a golf shot nearly. But you saw the bit of brazenness coming back into him, and that's what we want to see in Garrod Higarty because that's when he seems to flourish. But yeah, like I could see now that this fella's coming at the right time. And even when he came off the pitch, you know, there was a bit of a standing ovation from the Limerick fans, and like that's a that's a daunting prospect now for a, a Clare or Kilkenny now going into the final knowing that you're going to be facing a Garrod Hegarty who looks like the, he has the swagger back Yeah he is a big day player like he loves the, the finals that's when he really shows up Exactly he seems to flourish um, other players maybe if you if you have good form going into a final sometimes they fall flat because they feel there's an expectation on them but Garrod Hegarty is the opposite I think the bigger the game the more he'll flourish in it and I think coming to an all Ireland final maybe he's been criticised a little bit this year for his performances or lack of performances at different times um, maybe harshly a lot of people would say but that'll be water off a duck's back for him knowing I'm preparing for an all Ireland final here I was man of the match last year in the final with 24 possessions I can shoot the lights out here again and very capable of turning up and look Limerick won't care what happened this year as long as he turns up in the final and Limerick leave, leave with Lee McCarthy it's all forgotten after that and that's a huge prospect for Limerick at the moment yeah Limerick they're going for their four in a row now will that play in their minds or, or You've been there. So what is that like? Do you try and put that out of your mind? Can you possibly put that out of your mind? Everybody is is saying it to you, whether you're going to the shop or whatever you're doing, you know, people are saying it to you. How do you, I suppose, put that to the back of the mind or just concentrate on the game as it comes? I, well, I'd say, look, I mean, from John Kiley and, and Paul Canork, I think they're well-warned at this stage. They'll want to keep that out of the dressing room as much as they can. And 
if you look back at even the Munster final, we see Darrow Donovan talking after the game and saying that you know people wrote us off and different things. And you know, I don't think many people wrote them <laughs> off, but obviously they just want that. They, they just, just yeah. want that, yeah. And I think I, I think it's a really good strategy. They're kind of keeping themselves in a place where they're not letting it seep into the dressing room, where this belief of we're possibly the greatest team of all time, or we can go for five in a row, never mind four. And I think they're 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 doing a really good job of keeping that outside of the dressing room. If the talk is out there, we'll let it be outside the dressing room, but don't let it creep inside. So I think Kylie and Kinnerk and and the whole backroom team will be well warned and you know maybe even take lessons to, from Kilkenny back in 2010 that you might have an exceptional team but it only takes one day to get dethroned and suddenly you're back to square one so I just think they're well warned they're, they're focusing on an All-Ireland final now they'll have four in a row and whatever happens going forward is whatever but they're getting ready for an All-Ireland final now and I don't think talk of a four in a row or five in a row comes into the dressing room with them. I'll not ask you who you think will go on and win until tomorrow after the other <laughs> semi-final, but it, they will be hard to stop. Well, look, they're the favourites now, and regardless who wins tomorrow, Limerick will be favourites going into the final, and that's the bottom line. And there's a reason for that. Um, like they were able to absorb everything all the way through with them today, and you know there's a 15-point swing in the game where it's just incredible to think that that's a possibility where you're down by six and you go and you win by nine. But that's the team that's out there. Um, so even if you know Galway stayed in this game till the 60th minute. Like I still believe that that Limerick team can can still just pip you at the post and that be enough. So whether Kilkenny or Clare win tomorrow, Limerick are the favourites going into the final, and that's that's just the way things are. And you know it'll suit Kilkenny or Clare anyway to be the underdogs because you'd rather come in just you know under the cover there and 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 have your pot shot at Limerick. But look, it's a daunting prospect for any team at the moment. And just at the start of the game, the teams were parading around the pitch here and. You turned and said that you feel nervous. What's <laughs> yeah. it like for you watching on now? I, I don't know. Is it just when you hear the band and you hear the crowd that it, it evokes memories? But yeah, I felt nervous there watching it because I suppose you were just nervous to see what kind, what was going to transpire. And I think it's just associated with the day. Like you get these memories back. But I was laughing there when I was saying to you, I was like, why do I feel nervous? Yeah. I have no skin in the game here whatsoever. But yeah, look, it's just been here so many times. You know what the players are thinking. You know what they're feeling. You know what the crowd are feeling as well. And maybe it's just the atmosphere and the energy here it just kind of makes you a bit nervous but it's a kind of I suppose it's a, an excited type of, type of nerves yeah and it was an incredible atmosphere it really was like I don't know what I was expecting today but it was great to see such a big crowd and you could feel that mm. when you say that you know it's memories coming back to you is there any one memory in particular going around maybe your first time in the mm. All-Ireland is there anything that sticks out yeah maybe my first time because um you kind of don't ever think you may be here like because it just seems like such a pipe dream when you're younger so when you actually like there's a few things that are I suppose famous for and it's like you know running out of the tunnel in a match and m m walking behind the Artane Boys band and so when you do tick that box of walking behind the Artane Boys band look you know you have a job to do but you'll always have that memory of your first All-Ireland like you know it's Noel Hickey in front of you or JJ behind you and so for me that was a very special memory but I'm sure if you know if you spoke to any of the Galway players here who played back in um, 2017 or if you if you talk to any Limerick players over the last few years like those memories are special memories to have and you know walking around and seeing the crowd seeing Hill 16 rising as well it's just all those are special memories even though look you, you kind of you park them and you I suppose you try and focus on the game I suppose when you finish up you have a little look back and you go god they were they were great memories so yeah walk mine our team mine's band before Stall Ireland you kind of knew I've made it from here <laughs> and you said when you look back is that when it hits you then you realise what I've actually done here yeah kind of look you're in a bubble really for your career and you, you kind of want to look forward and not look back um, and it's you know it's a, it's a roller coaster like it feels like just a click of your fingers and from the day you started to the day you finished and maybe it's just every so often you'll be at home and it could be at Christmas and there's a Laker Gale on and suddenly they play a match or something you look at it and you, you just like that's not the memory I had of the game and I can't believe I was playing that day so I remember I was class that day <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever said that now, but yeah look there's lots of those memories and it's maybe when the dust settles and you step away from it and you kind of go god I might actually watch that game again and see and it kind of brings back funny memories to think that you were there and what memories you had of that game as opposed to what you're actually watching on the game now and for Henry Shefflin then as well, obviously your former teammate, what will he be like, I suppose, leaving Crow Park today? Um, he did the press conference, he, he seemed disappointed, but you know he, he spoke about Limerick and how good they were too. Well, look, for, Henry's a grounded fella and the reason he was so successful is he just took ownership, whether you were good, whether you were bad, he was well able to recognise, you know, did we, de did we deserve to lose today and taking it on the chin if you did. And look, Henry will be disappointed, he's invested in Galway at the moment and that's the type of person he is, he's passionate about Galway, he's passionate about whatever he's doing. You could see him on the sideline today, you know, fighting for every free he could possibly get. 
um, and he'll be disappointed going home but at the same time Henry will know that they were just beaten by the better team today and you can you can make your peace with that at times as well you know it mightn't be the results you wanted but when you know you were just out fought okay we, they'll have stuff to work on next year and they know very definitely that we still have a huge bar to step up to here but Look, Henry will be disappointed this evening, but he'll go home saying, like, we were beaten by the better team and we can't have many complaints. And Sometimes when that happens, although it's a sickening feeling, you can kind of just go, well, I can see how it happened and that's sport and if you're not good enough, you don't win.